and welcome to the Owatonna Today Show. I'm Shelley Whitehead. Thanks so much for joining us on this Wednesday. We love that you are a part of us. Remember, you can see us right here on Charter Channel 8, six days a week. If you can't see us, you can always find us on YouTube or Blip TV. And when you like us on Facebook, Leanne does this great thing where she uploads the most recent episode right to your newsfeed. How convenient is that? So make sure you do like us on Facebook. We love that you are a part of our production here at the Owatonna Today Show. So if you would like to see something on the Owatonna Today Show, there's two ways you can get a hold of us. You can always send us an email at owatonnatoday at charter.net or you can call Leanne Alt, our producer, at 390-5751. Let them know what you'd like to see right here on the show and we'll try and get it on there for you. A good show today. I'm excited to have with us Tanya Paley to talk about a safe and drug-free coalition as well as Dave Purcell talking about upcoming weather to be aware of. You know, spring is the season of that great change. So stick with us. We'll be right back on the Owatonna Today Show. Hello, I'm Sean McNulty. And I'm Deb Gillard with Brookdale Senior Living, Sterling House, and Clarebridge of Owatonna. And we are a proud sponsor of the Owatonna Today Show. I needed more than just another dead-end job. I wanted a career, so I expressed myself. With the kids off to college, I decided it was time for me to go back to work and express myself. Express got me in touch with some really great companies. Now, I'm on my way to a great career. Express Employment Professionals is in contact with thousands of companies in need of quality employees. Come in now and get the job you deserve. Express yourself today. Hi, I'm Dr. Beth Giltfett of Horizon Eye Care Professionals. Eye care you can trust. We're proud supporters of Owatonna Today. And we're back with the Owatonna Today Show. Tanya! Good morning, Shelly. How's Shelley. it going? It's going great. How was your Passover? Oh, thank you for asking. Yeah, yeah it's uh, it's done. We get to have bread again. Yay! Yeah. <laughs> the carbs! <laughs> yes, I went on a low-carb diet for the week. <laughs> well, yeah, the end wants to know if it works. We'll save that for another show. <laughs> but we're here to talk about Safe and Drug Free Coalition. Yeah. And um, this is, you've been a part of this. It's your passion, isn't it? It is. To help is. the area. Yeah. Awareness, understanding, and communication. Well, you know, this is such a great community for supporting our kids. And that's really what this is about, is supporting our kids with some real world situations that they can run into and trying to help. Um, prevent that from happening, trying to give them the information they need, give parents the information they need. So, um, yeah, I do feel strongly about it because I, you know, we all care about our kids and mm. I have kids and I want them to stay safe and drug free. We'd so. love to think that this, we lived in the leave, leave it to beaver world of, right. of you know, Wally and the beave and, you know, the <laughs> biggest problem is they put a baseball through the window, but that's not the world we live in. And so part of it is just becoming aware of what is really actually happening around sure. us. And, yep. and you want to talk about perceptions today, a little bit about I that. I do. Um, so let me start with a little story. Um, last week we were at Willow Creek doing training for our alcohol prevention curriculum and we started in sixth grade because we think that's the right place to start it. Um, not most, most sixth graders are not drinking but you know that is the time when we start to see some experimentation sixth, seventh, mm. eighth grade. And I know that might shock some people um, but that's just that's what the research shows is that you know not all of sixth graders by any means, but some of them are going to um, start thinking about these issues. So we want to get in there and have those conversations start right away. The dialogue. Yes. So we asked these sixth graders, we said, we're going to be talking about alcohol prevention today. How many of, we, we had given them a survey in the fall and we said, what do you think the survey showed? We asked you guys if you had had more than a drink of alcohol in the last 30 days. What percentage of sixth graders at Willow Creek do you think said that they had? And we got the craziest numbers, Shelley. I mean, we got um, up to like 40%. So one student thought almost half of the yes. other students were drinking. Yes, they thought that a significant percentage of the sixth graders were drinking. Wow. So then, so we gave them the correct information, which, which is it's like 5%. Um, really pretty low in this sixth grade. There's a huge difference yeah. between 40% and 5%. <laughs> right, 
Right. And then, of course, then we said, well, okay, high school, tell me about high school. What do you think by the time they get to 12th grade, what percent? And, you know, it was like 75, 80. They even said 100 <laughs> percent. One of the kids They're said 100 so percent. <laughs> um, so why does this matter, Shelley? It yeah. matters for this reason. What we know is that and we talked about this with the sixth graders in general. You know, we talk about peer pressure, but peer pressure is not always, you know, here, Shelly, have this drink. Mm -hmm. Peer pressure is about trying to fit in. And we as adults do this too. It's not just kids that Keeping do this. up with the Joneses. Yeah, we kind of want to know that we're doing what other people are doing, that we're normal. Mm. And um, so because that's so important to us and because it's really not at the level of consciousness, it's kind of unconscious mm -hmm. that we're, you know, we want to be normal, um, we kind of take our cues from what we think our peers are doing. And so if sixth graders actually think, mistakenly think, that their peers are drinking, then they're much more likely to say, well, I'll try that because that's normal. Because everyone else is. Yep. I want to be normal. Yep. Mm. So what they have found, and, and um, I was thinking about this, have you ever been in a hotel <laughs> where, where they give you a little sign that says, most of our guests reuse their towels? <laughs> yeah, suggest, suggest. <laughs> yes, and what they have found is that when you give them, and they, they'll give you, you know, 27% of, or whatever, of the guests in this room have reused their towels, um, it actually changes people's behavior if they know that their peers, the actual accurate information about what their peers are doing. So. What we want to do as a coalition is train folks in the community. First of all, we want them to know what the real numbers are so that they can tell their, you know, the young people in their life what's actually going on. So, for example, yep. if, if only 5%, that means 95% of the students aren't drinking. So Correct. So most of my peers aren't drinking, then that's what I should do. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And, you know, even, even older teens... Mm -hmm. You know, what, what we think we know based on student surveys where we actually ask them, not what do you think your peers are doing, but what are you doing? Mm -hmm. um, what we know is that even in high school, when we asked them about drinking in the last 30 days, it was something like 40% of 12th graders that said that they had had a drink in Far the last 30 100%. days. Far from 100%. Far from 100%. <laughs> and what that means, what you can tell the 12th grader in your life is, hey, it might seem like everybody's at a party on the weekends because that kind of behavior gets talked up a lot. Yeah. Um, but in fact, 60% of kids are at home doing are homework at, or, or playing Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah, they're doing I don't know. something else. Yeah, 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 they're doing something else. And so you could be perfectly normal in choosing that. And that, that has a lot of power. Mm. So... Um, so we, we're having a coalition meeting. We have these meetings now quarterly. And our next one is uh, not this Friday, but the Friday the 12th. Okay. And we meet at the fire hall um, at the, over the lunch hour between noon and 1.30. It'd be great if folks want to come for the entire hour and a half, if they can only make it because their lunch is from noon to 1. Mm. You know, come for the portion that you can come for. We're actually going to have somebody from Fairbo who does, a, they do a lot with this um, messaging they're going to tell us about what they're doing in Fairbo and how it's made a difference mm -hmm. and how we can implement it here. Um, so this could be done in a, you know, a youth group organization. This could be certainly done through the schools. Mm -hmm. um, and so coming and learning a little bit more about, or if you're in Big Brothers, Big Sisters, mm -hmm. you know, all the different ways that we interact with our young people in the community. You're a grandparent. Yeah. Um, so I really encourage people to come and learn a little bit more about the power of what's called positive social norms. You know, from Mrs. Reagan years ago, just say no has always been so very negative. So this right. is a whole new mental shift in the way to look at this. Yep. Saying most of us don't yeah. is really what it's about. And, and so kind of flipping it to say, yeah. hey... If you do do it, you're not in the majority anymore. You might think you're really cool, but that's not the cool thing to do. So, cool. Cool. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, a uni it's not unique. I'm sure this has been tried before, but I love that we are taking the bull by the horn, so to speak, and making this an, uh, the proactive thing, making this the most important thing to understand is that you, yeah, 
don't, I don't know. Everybody wants to be cool. I've never been yep. cool, so I really don't know what that feels like myself. <laughs> but you do still strive for that and just have that, for the, especially for these teens who really need that, that approval is super exactly. important. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. Yep. I mean, there's a reason they're all walking around with those headbands on their head. What and is the... that? <laughs> I don't understand so much. You know, I feel so... Away from the hands down. Yeah, hands yeah. Down <laughs> you know, we know that teenagers, you can, you, can, <laughs> you can figure out what's cool by looking at the teenagers in terms of what they wear. Yeah. So we also know that they're taking their cues in all sorts Social of other cues. ways. Yeah, yes. that's true. Wow. Yeah. So, um, you know... The other thing is if you can't come to the coalition meeting and you would like to have us come and talk to your group or, or just get the information about what's going on and what, what the sur student surveys actually showed, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, you can contact me and I think my contact information will be coming up in a little bit on the I'll screen. For it. Oh, there it is! <laughs> yeah, it's like magic. Yay! <laughs> so um, my office is at the United Way, so you can always stop by or um, you know contact me through uh, those various means on the screen and you can get on our email list I can come and talk to your group um, or someone else from the coalition can. So and I think, again, every time you come on, the biggest thing that reminds me is we need to start talking about this. Mm -hmm. And that and parents need to realize that, that they shouldn't give up, that they should continue to support their kids and help and talk to their kids through this time because yep. there is a light at the end of the tunnel, but there need, it needs to be. It's hard work, isn't it? It is hard work, but parents really are the most important um, message that kids get and you know they might pretend that they don't care what their parents think <laughs> but they do and um, you know and if for a little while it seems like they don't that they will come back to mm. caring the message um, still needs to be there the message still needs to be there and I think the message that our community really cares about them because teenagers sometimes feel like nobody cares about yeah. them and that's not true that's right. Good. All right. Well, so when again is that coalition meeting? <laughs> the coalition meeting is next Friday, the 12th, from noon to 1.30 at the fire hall. Is there a cost for that? Oh, no, no. no. And, and you can certainly bring a lunch. Some people do eat their lunch. It's, okay. it's uh, you know, just a, just a meeting, just a chance to get together. And as I said, to learn something. It's not, we're not just um, talking to, to yeah. each other about, no. you know, different things. We're actually bringing somebody in to, to, to learn something. Thank you so much for your time, Tanya. Look Thank forward you. forward to talking to you again, hopefully yeah. soon. Here I'll soon. be back. Awesome. <laughs> All right, we'll be right back with the Oatanda Today Show. Stay with us. I'm Diane Wilson of Profinian Financial, the bank that helps you achieve your financial dreams. Profinian Financial is proud to be a supporter of the Oatanda Today Show. Hi, Ann Pluskanko here from Senior Place. Senior Place has new hours. Mondays and Fridays, we're open 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Participate in Zumba Gold, Bike Club, Table Tennis, Computer Classes, Speakers, and much more. Don't forget the Senior Place Partnership Program with 39 businesses giving discounts and incentives with your Senior Place membership card. Membership is only $35 for the year, which comes to just $3 a month to be a member. Consider joining us today. Everyone deserves opportunities to have a good life. A quality education that leads to a stable job, enough income to support a family through retirement, and good health. But the reality is, many children fall behind, many families are struggling, and many others are in poor health. United Way's goal is to find long-term solutions. Thanks to a grant from the Otto Bremer Foundation, we're hosting community conversations this year to address these issues. If you'd like to join us, please call our office. Hi, this is Dr. Amy Swain, and I want everyone to hear better. At Amy Swain Hearing Centers, we offer many different brands of hearing instruments because everyone has a different lifestyle. Let me, Dr. Amy Swain, help you find the best hearing device for your hearing needs at Amy Swain Hearing Centers of Owatonna, Austin, and Wasika. Call 1-800-804-3361 for an appointment today, or visit my website at www.amyswainhearingcenters.com, because you deserve to hear better. Hi, I'm Brenda with the Mortgage Office of Brenda Bednar aligned with American Mortgage and Equity Consultants, where closings feel right, right from the beginning. I'm a proud supporter of the Owatonna Today Show. 
And we're back with the OATAN to Today Show. I'm Shelley White. I with me Dave Purcell. Good morning, afternoon, cool. evening. We never know when this is going to be safe. Same. That's true. That's it true. Could be all day long. So yeah. hi, I'm Mike, and morning. I'm Jake so with Nap Auto here. Parts. Dave and I, we've, we've been friends for a long time. A long time. Yeah, it's, and watched your boys grow up, and mm -hmm. they were scared of me at some points, which is how I like it. I like to keep children on their toes. That keeps them honest. <laughs> it does. It does. Dave, I want to. Uh, would you do a quick uh, introduction of yourself, and then talk? We'll talk about why you're here today. Absolutely. Uh, I'm Dave Purcell, and um, I'm the uh, coordinator for Steel County. Skywarn. Um, we're a group of about 65 uh, volunteers right now on our roster um, that are trained uh, and certified by the National Weather Service. We actually have certified trainers from the National Weather Service as a member of our team, three cool. of them right now. So we do our own training, um, but that it still uh, meets the certification goals of the National Weather Service. Um, anyway, during times of severe weather, as this is the season, tis the season, tis yeah. the season, then um, uh, then the, the uh, we position these people at various portions of the county um, to monitor severe weather as it uh, as it threatens the uh, the county. Why do you do this, you personally? Oh. I'm, I've been in and around. I grew up in Kansas. Oh and, my goodness! And then uh, you know, <laughs> so in and around uh, severe weather all my life. Um, the uh, time periods uh, prior to being here in Oatana. Uh, years ago, I had worked at a radio station where we maintained a nine-county spotter group. Mm. Um, so very active uh, with severe weather. Um, and add to that the fact that I'm a pilot uh, mm. and um, I love weather. So you're one of those people who when the storm comes, you go outside to look at it. You don't Absol go in your basement. Absolutely. These people yeah. scare me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Unfortunately, I'm, I'm one of those people that sometimes gets caught in the basement down at the uh, down at the uh, <laughs> fire hall, our, our operations center. Yeah. Um, you know, because somebody's got to be there to run yeah. that. It actually takes about four and a half, four to five people to staff the fire hall portion of uh, of what we do. And and um, that is a, a lot of computers and and mm -hmm. radar and that kind of thing down yep, there. Yep, we use National Weather Service uh, radar feeds mm -hmm. um, that we take and uh, some special radar software. Um, if anybody wants them to know, it's GR Level 3 is the one that we prefer, that we use. Mm -hmm. uh, we also use another product called GR Level 2, same company. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, But they take National Weather Service data feeds for the, the radar itself. Okay. And then we'll utilize that information combined with the observations of our people in the field mm -hmm. Um, to uh, to position ourselves safely. That's mm -hmm. our number one goal. Um, <laughs> so they can the, do it again some other time. So they can do it again. <laughs> That's right. Um, yeah. First and foremost, we want our guys to be safe, and then after that, then uh, to uh, be able to adequately provide advance warning of of, um, of threats to the county. When the, when you get that information, you have the spotters, you mm -hmm. have the National Weather Service. What do you do with that information? As That's a great question. Yeah. Um, our, our spotters are at, typically we position them, like I said, in, in what we call our sweet spots. Uh -huh. Sweet spots are predetermined locations in the county where you have good visibility, um, a safe shelter nearby if necessary, and multiple exit uh, paths, mm -hmm. exit strategies. There's a lot more to, to spotting and than, driving around than and, just driving yeah, around yeah. Um, because, the, again, that number one goal is to be safe. Mm. Um, uh, we, uh, it is important. Uh, what we do is important. These uh, Our volunteers, they donate their time, their gas, their hail dents on the car if, oh, if no. it could happen. Fortunately, not often. Oh, good. <laughs> um, but uh, but they, they do that on a regular basis. Um, some of the people are, you know, mostly people have day jobs as mm -hmm. well. Um, and some of these people are actually uh, are paid, continue to be paid. Their employees, employers pay them while they're gone oh, spotting. Um, others are actually taking unpaid time um, and donating that. Um, to the safety um, of the community. To the safety of the community. That's fantastic. Um, it's a it's an important mission, and, and what we do for that uh, is we we put these people out. Um, uh, like I said, we take about four four to five people um, that we, we staff the operations center, mm -hmm. and the remainder get paired up into teams of two, um, and then sent out into the uh, county. The teams of two actually we learned that a couple of years ago during the uh, June seventeenth tornadoes, uh, the importance of of having those people in teams so that they can uh, you can safely have one person driving and the other person. Spotting. spotting. Uh, so you see you have 65 people. That number dwindles quickly when you pair them and then you have the people and mm -hmm. those who may not be available. That's right. They, and that's the yeah. thing is the fact that we have people that work night shifts that are available in the daytime or daytime shifts and work are available at yeah. night. So, uh, and then when you can combine that with the fact that there are 430 square miles in Steele <laughs> County, more volunteers would be a good thing. <laughs> okay, um, so you take the information from the field, you take yes. the information, and then what do you do with that? And then that information, we're constantly communicating with the National Weather Service, either via radio, we have multiple means of communication, phone line, mm. to, uh, amateur radio, 
um, and now 800 megahertz is uh, available as well. Because you never know what might happen um, to some of the other modes. Absolutely, of and so you always want to make, be sure that you have multiple means of communication. Um, not in in some counties, the uh, requirement is that uh, you know you have to have an amateur radio license in order to participate in their spotter groups. Here in town, actually, we don't. Um, or in in Steele County, uh, we have a number of people that are using cell phones and. Um, because of the the transition to 800 megahertz, we actually are able to to utilize 800 megahertz radios for those people that were previously on cell phones. Mm -hmm. um, cell phones mm -hmm. have the problem in the fact that that if I'm if I'm talking to uh, if there's weather threatening my spotters, I have to make individual calls to let them ah. let them know of what's going on. Uh, as opposed to if they're on the, the amateur radio or on the 800 megahertz radio, we can make one announcement one and everybody hears it. So there, when people are listening to severe weather, you know, we have, um, oftentimes we hear from the, those on the radio weather stations that, well, this is not an unconfirmed mm -hmm. uh, sighting. Mm -hmm. What's the difference between a confirmed and unconfirmed sighting? How do we know that yeah. kind of thing? Yeah, a lot, a lot of times what you'll hear from the warnings will be indications where they'll talk about it in the terms of this is a radar-indicated tornado. Okay. Um, and the challenge that you've got with that is the fact that uh, that radar is line of sight. It's straight beams. Mm -hmm. uh, and the Earth, on the other hand, is curved. It's very complicated. <laughs> it is. It's, it's, we've known that for some time, though. though the <laughs> Earth is round. round. Um, and, and what happens <laughs> with the, uh, the primary radar site for this area being in Chanhassen, 40-plus um, miles away, uh, what that means is the fact that by the time the radar beam actually reaches Steele County, you're talking bare minimum 5,000 feet above the ground. Mm -hmm. uh, by the other end of the county, it's closer to seven. So it could be really high um, in the sky. Yeah. In other words, the radar is looking at the things that are happening in the mid to top levels mm -hmm. of the storm, as opposed to the severe weather like a tornado yeah. or straight line winds, which are all occurring in the bottom thousand feet. Okay. Um, so therefore, confirmed, you know, or spotter, uh, you know, trained spotter indicated warnings do have more credibility simply because they're there. As opposed to somebody calling just some. Joe Blow saying, I call, I see a, a mm -hmm. tornado. A train spotter actually has more credibility. We've got, the, yeah, we do have the, the credibility because frankly, we've been taught, you know, how to identify the things that look like tornadoes but really uh, aren't. Okay. Um, and so there's a number of different uh, portions that go into that. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but that's what our training is about. We mm -hmm. provide that free as well. We already did our first uh, round of training for the year, though we've had several requests that came in almost immediately afterwards. Oh. Um, so we're going to try to put together another uh, another potential training uh, session. So it's for anybody who's um, interested. Anybody. And as a matter of fact, you don't have to want to be a spotter in order to come to the training session. Okay. If you just want to know more about severe weather, we're happy there to do that. Go. Which just makes sense because it affects your whole life. Absolutely. It's important to understand what to do and, mm -hmm. and what to, what you see in the sky. Absolutely. Yeah. And and that's that's one of my major goals um, is is the fact that we would love to have the best educated population period, <laughs> uh, regardless of whether you're spotting or not. Mm -hmm. um, it's, uh, it helps us to be able to, to know, it helps you to be able to know what we're talking about. <laughs> yeah. um, but we do work with, uh, with the spotters. We will actually, when they call in, we'll actually we have a, a public information officer, one of our team that's mm -hmm. down there, which is dedicated to bringing those updates, not just to, to the people through the local radio stations, mm -hmm. through local media. Um, we do have a couple of, of, of our spotters which are currently carrying dash cams. So Ooh, it fancy. is possible if you go out and visit our website, you can have a link off to some of the dash cams. <laughs> may or may not be active during any given <laughs> event, but uh, but it is there. Okay, good. Well, so um, let's do a quick rundown of some things. Mm -hmm. It is severe weather. We need to be aware of it. What are some things people need to be aware of in their own homes once they hear these so severe weather alerts? Absolutely. Um, first of all, the, the storm sirens that you hear outside, those are intended for outside. They're really not intended for you to actually hear them inside the house. Oh, okay. So... Um, uh, don't don't be you know be aware of other things other f forms of information, um, but uh, the, the difference between a watch and a warning a watch is indicated early typically very early in the day as they're talking about these things that uh, the conditions are favorable for the formation of either severe weather or uh, severe storms or a tornado depending on the type of watch. Um, the second form is the, the warning, of course. Warning indicates that can, the, the actual, you know, either the radars detected or spotters have, have uh, indicated that uh, the tornado or severe weather okay. uh, is occurring at that time. So there's actually, um, it's been spotted, yeah, whatever It's been that spotted in one form or another. So therefore, it's, it's important at that point to, to be cognizant that it is going on, take it seriously. Okay, yeah, so and just be aware of that. Those mm -hmm. differences are very important. Yeah. Sometimes they get confusing, and I know, they're, I think they might be trying to change some of those things up, but maybe we can talk about that at another time. So Sounds great. I want to thank you for your time. And if you do 
you would like more information on how to become a spotter or just even go to one of those training sessions, you see the information right there on your screen. Screen. I know Dave would love to have you be a part of it. Absolutely. That. Good. It's a pleasure seeing you again. Good Take to see care you. Of you. All right. We will be right back with the Owatonna Today Show. Please stay with us. Hi, I'm Mike. And I'm Jake with Napa Auto Parts. Napa has the know-how for all your automotive needs. Napa is a proud supporter of the Owatonna Today Show. Have you talked to your teen about marijuana lately? Maybe you should. Regular marijuana use can sap a teen's motivation to learn. Users do not live up to their potential and drop out of positive activities. Marijuana affects memory and learning and stays in your system for weeks. Marijuana also affects judgment and perception. Reaction time when driving is reduced by 41% after smoking one joint and 63% after smoking two affecting the safety of your teen and other drivers on the road. You need to talk to your teen about the effects of marijuana use. It's not just a harmless high. For more information, please contact the Steele County Safe and Drug Free Coalition. Hi, I'm Jan Hansen, and I am at A Plus So and Back, the fun place to be. We are proud supporters of the Owatonna Today Show. And we're back with the Owatonna Today Show. A quick look at what's going on in your community. The 2013 Family Festival's coming up, Festival is coming up Thursday, April 18th from 6 to 7.30 at the Willow Creek Intermediate School. The Family Festival is a celebration of the Week of the Young Child. Families with children ages 0 to 7 will find the festival a great family experience. No registration is necessary and the event is free. Bring your family and have some fun to the 2013 Family Festival at Willow Creek Thursday, April 18th from 6 to 7.30. Young Life is having their 35th annual cake auction. If you've never been a part of this, it is a fantastically fun and interesting time. It's Saturday, April 20th at the OHS gym. Doors open at 10 a.m. with a live auction at 11. Actually, here it kind of gets physical. <laughs> People wanting certain cakes, it's a little scary. You can also play the high-low game at 1 o'clock and 3 o'clock. It is uh, There's game prizes. There's two iPads are available. Wow, that's exciting. Auction features a 100 auction cakes and specials, 100 sale cakes, Sold outright for 40 bucks. So even if you just want a cake and go pick one out yourself, 60 silent auction baskets and ample seating and concessions with activities. I do believe the funds for this do go to the Young Life Association. It's a lot of fun. And if you haven't been, you should go to this annual cake auction Saturday, April 20th. Again, doors open at 10 with a live auction at 11. It's just a lot of fun. And then do want to remind you that Saturday, April 20th is the Knights of Night Wild Wild West Auction. Benefits for St. Mary's School in Owatonna. It's a silent auction that begins at 4 p.m. And then a live auction that does begin after that. It's in a foreign language. So I really don't know when that starts. You must be 21 to attend. It's a lot of fun. It is, again, to benefit St. Mary's School. Saturday, April 20th, uh, the doors open at 4. Admission is $5. Have a lot of fun with that. And do join the Coda Living community as they host their open house. Monday, April 22nd from 2 to 5. Neighborhood tours and refreshments at 5 o'clock is welcome and registration. From 5 to 7 is social reception. It is There is parking is limited, but there will be a shuttle available from the daybreak church to the, fest, to the community center. So again, that's an open house Monday, April 22nd from 2 to 5 uh, with neighborhood tours and refreshment. They'd love for you to join them and get to know a little bit more about their community. Thank you so much for joining us. On Friday, we're going to be speaking with Mike Johnson and Vicki Jensen. So we'll see you then.